Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. So in the past few lessons we talked about um, types of materials, their properties, what we use them for, etc, etc. So now we're going to talk about degradation and protection. So those materials tend to degrade over time and why do they degrade and what can we do to protect those materials? So over time materials, they will lose their properties because of the environment. So the environment has an effect on those materials and those uh, materials will decay and therefore their properties are not optimal anymore. An example would be metal that's rusting, right? Because it's in contact with oxygen and moisture. So because it's rusting, it's changing its chemical uh, composition and it's making it less strong, let's say. Um, so to protect these materials from degrading, what we're going to do is either apply processes or substances that will protect the materials and prevent or delay the degradation. So the first one is wood and modified wood. So wood, uh, wood sorry, not wood, wood can rot because uh, there are microorganisms and bacteria, fungi and whatnot that live inside the wood and basically transform it, kind of eat it up, so to speak. So because it's transforming the wood, it's making it uh, rot, it's making it less strong and so on and so forth. So what can we do to protect wood? We can varnish it. We can paint it, so varn a varnish it's a little bit like paint, but it's transparent. We can dip it in a copper alkaline solution, and that's going to make it green, as you see in the picture on the left, and that kills those microorganisms. Um, or you could heat it to very high temperatures, which also kills those microorganisms that would decay the wood. The paint and the varnish would create a protection so the insects, let's say, don't go inside the wood, but also um, uh, it makes it an environment that's maybe not as friendly also to, to, to live in. So that's for wood and modified wood. Next we have ceramics. So ceramics can be very strong and fragile at the same time. We know that if we drop them, for example, if they experience a shock, they can crack. But at the same time, it's still a very strong material. So unless you have a very strong shock, it's submitted to a, a strong force, it's um, otherwise very strong. It can also degrade if it's subjected to some acid, such as sulfuric acid, or some bases such as calcium hydroxide, which will basically kind of eat them up, so it transforms their chemical uh, structure. Thermal shock, so heat, going from very hot to very cold and vice versa, can also create a fracture. So it will make the ceramic expand very quickly or contract very quickly, and that will create cracks or fractures in the ceramics. And uh, in general, otherwise, they're very durable. We're going to find uh, ceramics that have lasted, uh, that have stayed in the ground for hundreds of years. Sometimes we find uh, objects made of pottery that come from the Egyptians, for example, or the Romans and whatnot. Their properties uh, can be enhanced, though, so they're very durable, but their properties can be enhanced by uh, finding the right type of clay, for example, and by baking that clay to proper temperatures to kind of make it stronger, and that way it will uh, resist a little bit better to uh, time and the environment. And obviously, we're going to try and avoid subjecting the ceramics to thermal shocks or uh, very strong force hits type of thing. And then we have metals and alloys. So the main problem with metals is corrosion. So corrosion is, is uh, caused by oxidation. So the contact of oxygen with the metals that causes them to rust. So what we can do to protect metals is actually put coatings that are made of zinc, chrome, gold, silver, nickel, aluminum, or lead. Those, they do not react with oxygen, they don't corrode, they don't rust. So by putting that type of metal on top of a metal that tends to rust, that protects it. We can also put other types of coatings, such as paint, enamel, which is a glass-based glaze, uh, grease or resin. So what we want to do is basically cut off the oxygen supply. We don't want the oxygen to be in contact with the metal. Now, another thing we can do, um, let's say we want to treat steel. So steel is an alloy. It's a mixture of iron and um, carbon. So we use heat to make it stronger. Now, these heat treatments um, are enhancing the mechanical properties 
of steel. We call this uh, quench hardening and tempering. So there are two steps to it, as you can see here. There's quenching, which is a heat tre treatment. We heat um, the alloy up to or over 800 degrees. And so that uh, increases the hardness, but it also increases the brittleness at the same time. And then uh, tempering is the second step. So that's a heat treatment that improves the toughness but it reduces the, oh my goodness, the elasticity, sorry. So there's uh, upsides and downsides to this. So we're kind of making it better, but it's not perfect. Uh, annealing is another type of treatment where we use heat to actually restore the steel's original properties. An example of that is welding. So what you have here on the right uh, is a graph that more or less represents the, um, the quenching and tempering uh, situation. So you can see the metal, the, the alloy would be heated and then it's cooled off. And then it's heated again, less so, and cooled off and heated and cooled off. So this part over here is the quenching part, the very high heat and cooling off. And the tempering is a little bit of heat, it's still very hot, but less so than the first step. So a little bit of heating, cooling off, heating, cooling, cooling off to make it uh, kind of stronger or better steel that is. Then we have plastics. So plastics can crack over time and they can change in color because of the action of light, UV rays, um, on them. Uh, liquids can also uh, create the cracks or can also change the structure of plastics and, and cause it to crack. Oxygen can also react with plastic and cause these problems. So what can we do to protect plastics? Well, we can use a waterproof coating since water is a problem. We can add an antioxidant, so kind of preventing uh, oxygen from reacting with it. And we can use special pigments that will mix with the plastic that absorb the UV rays so the plastic itself doesn't absorb the UV rays and it doesn't cause it to crack. Then we have composites. So if you remember, composites are made of two parts. There's a matrix and there's a reinforcement. So it's kind of two substances put, two substances, sorry, put together. Um, we're trying to basically make a super substance by using uh, the, the upsides of each substance, right? So they both have their strengths. So we're gonna use that by combining them. So the problem is they can deform or they can fracture and that can affect the matrix or the reinforcements. Oh, I'm sorry, it could also be uh, that there's a loss of adherence so they don't stick together, the matrix and the reinforcement that is. So uh, these could be the two problems. So what can we do to solve this? Unfortunately, there's no solution to this. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that those composites are as much as possible not subjected to the environment. So the environment will not cause these fractures uh, or the loss of adherence between the matrix and the reinforcement. So no great solution here. And that concludes what we can do to protect all these materials to make sure that they last as long as possible. So I hope it was clear. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. And otherwise, I will see you around for your next lesson. Until then, take care.